Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mass Retirees Weekly Update. Today's Friday, May 19th. I'm Sean Duhamel. Thank you so much for joining with us and tuning in again this week. Now, before I jump into the news of the week, which will focus on the cost of living adjustment, I wanna remind everybody of a few upcoming area meetings and one virtual teletown hall meeting that's a couple of weeks out. Now today, Friday, May 19th at 11 a.m., we will be in Peabody for our North Shore area meeting, which takes place at the Marriott Peabody. It's right off the highway on Centennial Drive. Our meetings tend to run about an hour and a half, start around 11 a.m., and we tend to wrap things up by about 12.30 or so. Now, we also have a question and answer period at the end of the meeting, and we draw cash door prizes for those members who are in attendance at the end of the meeting. Everybody puts their name in a bucket, and we, we pick five or six names out of the bucket in this cash door prizes. Now, our area meetings are open to all Mass Retirees members, and you're more than welcome to bring a guest. Uh, we serve light refreshments at our meetings, and I mention that because we've had some recent members um, or newer members reach out wondering you know, if lunch is being served or if there'll be refreshments and so forth. So we typically serve coffee, tea, you know, just some, some light refreshments along with some pastries and so forth um, to get you through the hour and a half or so that we're there together. But these meetings are, are a great opportunity for us to see you face to face, for you to be able to interact with us, to answer your questions on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We'll be available both before and after the meeting um, to talk to those members who are, are in attendance. Now in about two weeks on June 7th, Wednesday, June 7th, we will be down on the Cape at the Cape Cod um, Hotel and Conference Center in Hyannis, right across the street from the Cape Cod Melody Tent. That meeting will also kick off at 11 a.m. Um, and again, it's the same format that we're gonna have up in Peabody. And then on Friday, June 9th, we will be hosting our um, Teletown Hall meeting, our virtual meeting in all of our teletown halls kick off at 1 p.m. Eastern time. We have a later start date to accommodate those members who are living outside of Massachusetts and at, at places throughout the country in different time zones. We wanna make sure that we're providing an equal opportunity for all of our members, regardless of whether or not you're here in Massachusetts or spread somewhere else around the country or around the world, quite honestly, um, to give you the ability to, to participate in these meetings and interact with us um, just like everybody else. So with that, let me jump into the news of the week, which again is focused on the COLA. For those of you who follow uh, the legislative process on Beacon Hill, you've probably already um, discovered this on your own at this point, but unfortunately the two amendments that we had filed with the Senate budget or for the Senate budget um, one that would have increased the um, COLA base for state and teacher retirees from the current $13,000 base up to a new base of $16,000. That amendment was filed by State Senator Mike Brady. The second amendment we filed um, would have granted a 5% COLA for FY24 instead of the 3% COLA um, that the House passed in their budget and is contained in the Senate's version of its budget. Both of these amendments, unfortunately, earlier this week um, were withdrawn from the budget process. So those amendments will not be part of the debate that takes place next week. The reason why the amendments were withdrawn was that the Senate leadership um, has decided to keep a very tight rein on any um, debate involving issues or, or new costs to the budget that were not already part of the, the budget blueprint for FY24. As we reported over the past week or so, and some of you have probably been following this in, in the media here in Massachusetts, that the April tax revenues um, came in 1.5 or approximately $1.5 billion below what the benchmark um, estimates were for April of 2023. Now, while this does not impact the current FY23 budget, it also does not directly impact the FY24 budget. There is a, a concern that if things were to get become worse, um, then we may run into some budget problems. And the legislature and the legislative leadership in particular from both the House and in the Senate is taking a very conservative approach moving forward through the budget process. So unfortunately, and much to our deep disappointment, 
an increase in the state and teacher COLA base most likely will not be part of the FY24 budget that's underway right now. The good news is that for the 25th consecutive year, a 3% COLA is included in both the House and the Senate versions of the budget, and we are very confident that Governor Healy um, will follow suit and, and approve that that COLA, uh, that 3% COLA on a $13,000 basis. And as a matter of fact, she also proposed it in her budget that was filed on February 1st. So again, for the 25th consecutive year, a permanent COLA will be granted that becomes a, a permanent part of your pension, of your base pension. And that same law applies at the local level. And to the best of our knowledge, all 102 local retirement systems across Massachusetts have either already approved the FY24 COLA at 3% or are, or are in the process of doing so. So as it stands now, all retirees across Massachusetts, all public retirees will receive a COLA again this year. And over the past 25 years, with maybe two or three exceptions over that period of time, all public retirees across the Commonwealth have received um, that permanent reoccurring COLA that again becomes a permanent part of your base. And the reason why I emphasize that, and we have been talking about this now um, in, in these weekly updates, as well as in our newsletter and at our meetings, and it's quite simple. Across the country, we are seeing a growing and very disturbing trend where a number of state governments and local municipal governments have begun to cut back on COLA benefits. So what this means is that instead of granting an annual COLA, um, the COLAs have become ad hoc. And in many cases, when they are paid, it's really treated as simply a bonus payment. So you may get a COLA in some states, but you may only get a three or four or five or even a $600 bonus that is a one and done. It does not become a permanent part of those retirees' pension benefits. So while here in Massachusetts, we are going to continue to work as hard as we can to move this issue forward and find a way to overcome these hurdles, to improve COLA-based benefits um, for state and teacher retirees and continue to work with local retirement systems to do the same thing at the municipal level, we are ahead of the game in terms of the overall COLA policy that's here in Massachusetts. And that policy did not come into place um, easily. In fact, leading into this week's message and in the aftermath of our two amendments being withdrawn, um, we, we have begun to dig into our, our policy archives and our old newsletters, going back in time and rereading some of the, the reports that we published in the past about the COLA. And one of the, the positive aspects of, of digging into the past is realizing that this issue has never been easy. Going all the way back to our initial founding in, back in 1968 in our first major legislative accomplishment in 1971, which of course was well before my time. Um, I was not even one year old yet, one years old yet in 1971. But the first major accomplishment of Ralph White and the association officials back then was passing a state law that made sure that all public retirees, regardless of the size of their pension, received at least a basic COLA benefit because before 1981, excuse me, 1971, the COLA was only paid to retirees who received a, a pension benefit of less than $2,000 a year. So again, in 1971, that changed. Now, a decade later in 1981, in the aftermath of the acceptance or the passage of Proposition 2.5, when it just wreaked havoc across both state and local governments, and I'm sure those of you who are watching this right now, where you were probably working in government back in 1981, uh, you lived through those very difficult times. But it was our association, and Ralph in particular, who went to the legislative leadership back then and were able to change the state law to have the state assume responsibility for COLAs for everybody. Because up until Proposition 2.5, the cities and towns had to pay the same COLA benefit that was paid by the state, but that was no longer possible uh, because of the change in the state law through that referendum. Then another 10 or 15 years later, once we got into the 90s, because the state once again was going through tough economic times, uh, we went through a period of years where COLAs were paid on a very ad hoc basis. Instead of the annual COLA 
um, that we have come to become accustomed to now over the past 25 years. Colas in the 90s were paid really every three to five years. So you had these gaps where no cola at all was being paid. Well, that changed as a result of the 1996 Cola Reform Commission that our association, uh, together with former speaker Tom Finneran, were responsible in creating. Our association had a key role, a seat at the table during um, that commission, and the result ended up being Chapter 17 of the Acts of 1997, which is the landmark COLA reform law that created the law that, that we have come to appreciate and that has been successfully providing benefits to retirees for the past 25 years. But the message that all of these accomplishments have really hammered home with us is that it has never been easy. And the reason for that simply is the cost of these benefits. And the costs have only become costlier over time. And that has been driven by a number of factors. One is the, the pension funding schedules and the requirements to fully fund these benefits. Also through the pension funding schedules over the past 15 to 20 years, then has been a movement, not only here in Massachusetts, but all across the country, to put in place more conservative estimates. So whether it is the annual um, assumed rate of investment returns or more conservative mortality tables that reflect the fact that people are living longer. And these have gone to serve the benefit of the overall system by making sure that these systems are sustainable and that they're secure and that we can rely upon these benefits for not only today's retirees, but future retirees as well. And that's very important. However, there has to be a balance between providing for these benefits on a sustainable level while also making sure that we're meeting the needs of today's retirees. And unfortunately, that's where things seem to be falling short a little bit at this time, particularly for state and teacher retirees. As all of you know, it's been 12 years since we have seen the COLA base for state and teacher retirees increase. During that 12 year period of time, however, we've seen a number of municipal retirement systems go to great lengths to make sure that they are sharing the success of those local systems and the success that's been generated through pension investing to share that success, at least on a small scale or, or moderate scale, with the members of those systems. And some of the municipalities, like the town of Wellesley, have aggressively funded their pension system well before 1988, when the state law changed, making it a requirement to fund the retirement system properly. Well, Wellesley and a handful of other communities were well ahead of the curve began putting money in um, decades ago, many decades ago. And that's why Wellesley is, a, is in a position today to have one of the more advanced funding schedules and advanced COLA base out of any community in the state. And as we've been reporting, Wellesley Town Meeting just recently approved phasing in a COLA base improvement going to 19, 20, and ultimately $21,000 over the next three years. Uh, Bristol County has been a very similar process in moving forward. But the big obstacle we have to face is at the state level with the members of the state and teacher retirement systems, which are the two largest systems. As a result, they carry the largest cost of benefits. And the fact that the state is nearing full funding in 2036, the window in which to spread out payments for any new benefits is becoming shorter and shorter. And just like when we refinance our homes or take out a second mortgage, the length of that loan determines what the monthly payments are going to be. And it's the same basic philosophy that goes into our pension systems. The length of the funding schedule and the amount of debt that the, the system owes is going to determine the annual appropriation or the monthly appropriation. So those are all factors that are taken into consideration. Unfortunately, um, as we say in, in this week's email message, these costs are daunting. They're very large. And because of that, it takes an, an extra, extraordinary effort um, to find a, a path forward. But we have always managed over the past 55 years that we've been in existence um, to find a way forward, to find a way to overcome these obstacles and to provide better benefits for public retirees. And at the end of the day, to make sure at the very least that we're doing the best we can to help our members keep pace with inflation and ultimately make sure that you're not forgotten about in retirement. And that's exactly what we're gonna to continue to do. And, and thankfully, 
we have legislative leaders here in Massachusetts who are willing to work with us. So as disappointed as we are that we could not include an increase in COLA benefits in the current um, FY24 budget, we have been in constant communication with both House and Senate leaders. Um, there, every option is on the table. Doors are, are remaining open to us. There is no door that's been shut. No one is saying no. No one is saying that we, we can't achieve this. It's just going to take time. It's going to take some rethinking um, of, of how to go about paying for, for some of these benefits. And that's exactly what we're, what we're going to do. So thank you so much for tuning in this week. Most importantly, thank you for being a member of Mass Retirees. It means the world to us. And together, we're going to find a way forward. So with that, I'm going to sign off for this week. If you're in Peabody today, please stop by and say hello. Or if you're down on the Cape um, in the first week of June, come on down and say hello. But we'll be talking to you very soon. Take care, everybody.